By the late 19th century, the tide of history began to shift against Tipu Tip. His vast empire, built on the back of slavery, exploitation, and unrelenting violence, was starting to crumble. European colonial powers, particularly Belgium under King Leopold II, began exerting greater control over Central Africa. This new wave of imperialism, marked by military superiority and political maneuvering, would ultimately signal the end of Tipu Tip's reign as an autonomous ruler and slaver. However, Tipu Tip did not fall without a fight. His political acumen allowed him to initially adjust to these new realities, seeking to solidify his position and maintain some influence, even as European powers encroached on his territories. The years leading to his eventual downfall reveal much about the inherent violence and brutality that had characterized his rule, as well as the ways in which colonialism both dismantled and perpetuated the structures of exploitation he had helped to build. The final years of Tipu Tip's life were marked by a dramatic shift from unchecked power to a begrudging submission, but even in his decline, the impact of his dehumanizing activities endured. The late 19th century was a time of rapid European expansion into Africa, particularly after the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885. The so-called Scramble for Africa divided the continent among the major European powers, and Central Africa became a particular focus of attention due to its rich natural resources, especially rubber and ivory. For Tipu Tip, who had established his wealth and influence through the exploitation of these same resources, the growing presence of Europeans posed a serious challenge to his authority. Among the most aggressive of these powers was Belgium, under King Leopold II, whose personal ambition to control the Congo was both voracious and brutal. Leopold sought to monopolize the region's resources, primarily rubber and ivory, which were being harvested by African laborers under horrifying conditions. Although Tipu Tip had initially cooperated with European explorers like Henry Morton Stanley, helping them navigate the difficult terrain of Central Africa and facilitating their access to resources, he soon found himself in direct conflict with Leopold's imperial ambitions. One of the major points of contention was the control of the Congo River Basin, a region that Tipu Tip had dominated through his network of fortified outposts and trading posts. Leopold, however, saw this territory as central to his vision of a Congo free state, a vast area that he ruled as his personal colony. As European troops began to move deeper into the interior, armed with superior weapons and backed by international diplomacy, Tipu Tip was forced to make difficult choices about how to respond. Despite the growing European presence, Tipu Tip was not initially seen as an enemy by the colonial powers. In fact, he was often viewed as a useful intermediary, someone who could help the Europeans secure access to resources while maintaining control over local African populations. Tipu Tip's extensive knowledge of the region, his network of allies, and his military power made him a valuable asset in the eyes of colonial administrators. In 1887, Leopold II appointed Tipu Tip as the governor of the eastern provinces of the Congo Free State, hoping to use his influence to stabilize the region and increase the flow of ivory and rubber to European markets. This appointment was a clear recognition of Tipu Tip's importance, but it was also a calculated move to co-opt his authority and bring him under the control of the Belgian colonial administration. While Tipu Tip accepted the position, he was keenly aware that his power was being eroded by the growing presence of Europeans. During his tenure as governor, Tipu Tip attempted to strike a delicate balance between cooperating with Europeans and maintaining his own interests. He continued to oversee the slave trade and the extraction of ivory, even as the colonial authorities sought to curb these activities. However, the power dynamics were shifting. The Europeans, with their superior military technology and growing international influence, were no longer content to tolerate Tipu Tip's independent rule. As the 1890s progressed, Tipu Tip's influence waned. His role as governor became increasingly ceremonial, and his authority over the eastern Congo was gradually supplanted by European administrators. The Belgian forces, bolstered by new technologies, 
and the brutal force of King Leopold's regime began to crack down on the very slave trading networks that Tipu Tip had built. The end of the 19th century saw the effective dismantling of Tipu Tip's empire as European colonial powers took full control of the region. Tipu Tip's final years were marked by a gradual retreat from the public eye. As his influence in the Congo waned, he returned to his home on Zanzibar, where he focused on consolidating his remaining wealth and power. However, even in Zanzibar, his authority was being challenged. The British, who had established a protectorate over the island, sought to end the slave trade that had been central to Tipu Tip's wealth. In 1890, Britain officially abolished the legal status of slavery in Zanzibar, further eroding Tipu Tip's economic base. Although Tipu Tip continued to wield some influence in Zanzibar, his days as a powerful and feared figure in Central Africa were over. He lived out the final years of his life in relative obscurity, tending to his plantations and writing an autobiography in which he sought to present himself as a legitimate ruler and businessman rather than a brutal slave trader. His autobiography, however, did little to erase the violent legacy of his reign. Tipu Tip died in 1905, and with his death came the final dissolution of the empire he had built. While his immediate family retained some wealth and status in Zanzibar, they were no longer the dominant political force they had once been. The era of the Swahili Arab slave traders, which Tipu Tip had personified, was coming to an end as European colonial powers solidified their control over East and Central Africa. The legacy of Tipu Tip's brutal reign, however, did not disappear with his death. The social, economic, and environmental damage caused by his slave trading and ivory hunting operations left deep scars on the African landscape. Entire regions had been depopulated, with countless communities destroyed or displaced by the relentless cycle of violence and exploitation. The cultural fabric of Central Africa, once rich and diverse, had been torn apart by the dehumanizing forces of slavery and colonialism. The depopulation caused by Tipu Tip's slave raids also had long-term economic consequences for Central Africa. The loss of able-bodied men and women left many communities without the labor force necessary to sustain their traditional agricultural practices, leading to widespread food insecurity and famine. Moreover, the disruption of trade networks and the destruction of local economies made it difficult for these communities to recover in the aftermath of Tipu Tip's raids. The environmental impact of Tipu Tip's ivory trade was equally devastating. The decimation of elephant populations in Central Africa contributed to the broader environmental degradation of the region. The loss of these keystone species had ripple effects on the ecosystems of the Congo Basin, disrupting the delicate balance of flora and fauna that had sustained local communities for centuries. In many ways, Tipu Tip's legacy of exploitation and destruction helped set the stage for the environmental challenges that continue to plague the region today. Ironically, while Tipu Tip's empire was dismantled by European colonial powers, many of the systems of exploitation he had established continued under colonial rule. King Leopold II's Congo Free State, in particular, became infamous for its brutal exploitation of African labor in the pursuit of ivory and rubber. The forced labor system implemented by Leopold's regime, which resulted in the deaths of millions of Congolese, bore striking similarities to the methods Tipu Tip had employed during his reign. In this sense, Tipu Tip's legacy can be seen as part of a broader continuum of exploitation and violence that characterized both the pre-colonial and colonial periods in Central Africa. While the names and faces of the oppressors may have changed, the underlying structures of exploitation and dehumanization remained remarkably consistent. The colonial powers that took over Central Africa merely adapted and expanded upon the systems that Tipu Tip and others like him had established, continuing the cycle of violence and suffering that had defined the region for much of the 19th century. In the years since his death, Tipu Tip's legacy has been the subject of intense debate. In Zanzibar and parts of East Africa, he is remembered by some as a skilled diplomat and businessman 
who navigated the complexities of African and European politics to build a powerful empire. His autobiography, written in the final years of his life, presents him as a pragmatic leader who did what was necessary to survive in a violent and chaotic world. However, for many others, Tip a Tip is remembered as one of the most notorious slave traders in African history, a man whose greed and brutality contributed to the suffering and displacement of countless Africans. His role in the East African slave trade, along with his ruthless exploitation of Central Africa's ivory resources, has left an indelible stain on his legacy. Today, his name is often invoked as a symbol of the brutalities of slavery and the destructive impact of unchecked power and greed. In modern scholarship, Tipu Tip's life is often studied as a case study in the complexities of African history during the 19th century. His rise to power and his eventual downfall offer important insights into the ways in which African rulers and traders navigated the changing political and economic landscape of the time. However, any study of Tipu Tip's life must also reckon with the profound human suffering he caused as well as the long-lasting consequences of his actions for the people and environment of Central Africa. Tipu Tip's life and legacy serve as a stark reminder of the destructive power of greed and the human capacity for cruelty. His empire, built on the backs of enslaved Africans and the exploitation of Central Africa's natural resources, left a legacy of suffering and destruction that continues to shape the region to this day. The depopulation, economic dislocation, and environmental degradation caused by his reign were felt for generations, and the systems of exploitation he helped create were perpetuated under European colonial rule. At the same time, Tipu Tip's story also highlights the complexities of African history during the 19th century. As a powerful African ruler who both collaborated with and resisted European colonial powers, Tipu Tip occupied a unique and often contradictory position in the history of the continent. His life and legacy force us to confront difficult questions about power, exploitation, and the ways in which individuals and societies navigate the challenges of a rapidly changing world. Ultimately, Tipu Tip's legacy is one of violence and exploitation, but it is also a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power and the human cost of empire building. His story is a reminder that history is often shaped by individuals who, in their pursuit of wealth and power, leave a trail of suffering in their wake, a legacy that continues to resonate in the present day.